RNA-Seq, as you might already know, uses high-throughput sequencing technologies to sequence cDNA. In this way, we can get information about a sample's mRNA content. RNA-Seq tells us, on a genome-wide level, which exons are expressed in different tissue types, diseases, and conditions. Where do the data for RNA-Seq models and ensemble come from? Ensemble imports RNA-Seq from multiple species, including human, gorilla, and zebrafish. The data corresponds to different tissues for human, pig, and Nile tilapia, different time points for zebrafish, and different individuals for chimpanzee and coelacanth. Here you can see some examples. The human RNA-Seq information comes from the Illumina Body Map project, sequenced on HiSeq 2000 machines in 2010. Nile tilapia RNA-Seq comes from the Bro Institute. Zebrafish data are from here at the Sanger Institute. We use these data to enhance our gene set and to generate RNA-seq models. Another video addresses this analysis. Now we'll move to our browser and show you how to view the RNA-seq models. Let's look at the RNA-seq models in human for the USP25 gene locus. I'm using Ensemble version 67. You can either use the live site or our archive site if you want to see the same thing as me once the live site has been updated. I'll search for USP25 in humans. I'll expand gene and click on human. I'm going to go directly to the location by clicking here. This will bring me to the gene locus on chromosome 21. This is region in detail. To add the RNA-seq tracks, I'll click Configure this page at the left, and then RNA-seq models. The list of introns and gene models are shown for different tissue types. Click on the eye icon to find out where the RNA-seq data comes from. Let's turn them all on. I'll enable all the RNA-seq models. Now I'll close the menu by clicking on this tick or anywhere outside the box. The page should refresh and show the new changes. You can see that there are quite a few exons and introns detected by the RNA-seq studies from multiple tissue types. Just as a reminder, exons are drawn as filled boxes in our gene models and introns as connecting lines. Solid filled boxes are coding sequence, and empty boxes indicate non-coding untranslated region, or UTR. Let's look closer at the adipose tissue gene model and intron evidence. I'm going to move these tracks so they are next to the ensemble transcripts in this region. Just as a reminder, these are the transcripts from the main ensemble gene build. For human, these are based on cDNA and protein evidence from public databases such as Uniprot, SwissProt, Uniprot Tremble, and NCBI RefSeq. The transcripts are structured in the same way as the RNA-seq models, where boxes are exons, filled boxes are coding sequence, and UTR is shown as unfilled boxes. Both the gold and the red transcripts are protein coding, and the blue ones are non-coding transcripts. I'm going to close the CCDS set. These are consensus coding sequences. When the page reloads, it will remember my track order. The adipose RNA-seq gene model matches the exon structure of a gold transcript, USP25001. Gold transcripts are a high-confidence set, where manual annotation from the Havana project matches to what comes out of the Ensemble Automatic Annotation Pipeline. The RNA-seq here supports the hypothesis that the USP25001 splice variant is expressed in adipose tissue. Let's zoom in to view the introns in more detail around this region. A 
A deep stack of introns means that a lot of the sequence reads indicate an exon-exon junction at this position. The introns show varying support of the exon-exon junctions. You can click on either the model or the introns in order to find out more information. For example, this intron had 73 reads. Remember, you can turn on more tracks in this page using Configure This Page. Have a look at the RNA-Seq in the GeneBuild video if you want to know more about how these models were generated.